Exactly how realistic is Sandy's tree dome? A giant dome full of oxygen, under the crushing weight of the Pacific Ocean, and capable of a number of, uh, unorthodox activities. To the tree dome! Pick we hired a top scientist to look into our four biggest questions and see how many he could actually answer. So let's get to the bottom of the dome at the bottom of Bikini Bottom. Question one, could this tree even survive? In order for the tree dome to function as a habitat, it needs plant life to provide oxygen. We know what you're thinking. If this tree is on the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, how could it possibly get enough sunlight to survive? Let's check in with our top scientist. Well, actually that's the easy part. As long as the tree dome is in the euphotic zone of the ocean, sunlight would reach it no problem. The real problem is... Quick, get in the tree house. The inside of the tree has been completely destroyed. That's right, almost all of the inside of the tree has been carved out and replaced with weird squirrel furniture. There's hardly any tree left. So for the tree to provide oxygen, it requires leaves. And for it to sustain leaves, it needs to be able to move water from the roots through the trunk to reach the leaves. And to do that, the tree needs to be, well, alive. Are we expected to believe that a tree that's been carved away on the inside could really still be alive and healthy on the outside? Well, according to our top scientist, yes. While it's true that the trunk of the tree is responsible for vital processes that keep the tree alive, most of those processes take place on the outer ring of the trunk. As it grows wider, the wood on the inside becomes heartwood, which provides structural support but is not actually needed to keep the tree growing. In fact, it's not uncommon for critters to use hollow trees as their homes, just like Sandy does. And they say SpongeBob's not a realistic show. Question two, what kind of tree is it? Okay, so it's reasonable to conclude that this tree could exist. Or is it? See, in Teeth the Tree Dome, Sandy claims it's an oak tree. But could an oak tree do this? Okay, thought that'd be a bigger reveal. Let me explain. The bark of an oak tree is generally thick, coarse, and brittle, like this. But the bark on Sandy's tree appears to be paper-thin, floppy bark. I don't get it! And what's more, in the flea in her dome, this tree actually produces edible apples. <sighs> Much better. Oak trees definitely don't do that. No, you're thinking of something I like to call apple trees. Try and keep up. So either Sandy keeps getting new trees, or there's something seriously fishy about this tree. I guess we're gonna have to file this one under unanswered questions. Question three. What exactly is the dome made of? In the episode Tea at the Tree Dome, Sandy claims that it's made of a plastic called polyurethane. This dome is made of the strongest polyurethane. But in the episode Feral Friends, she states that the dome is made of a pressure-proof glass. It's a good thing my tree dome is made of 10 tons of pressure-proof glass! So which is it? To determine the truth, our top scientists examined which option could actually withstand the pressure at the bottom of the ocean. We already deduced that Sandy lives in the euphotic zone of the Pacific Ocean, which only gets about 1,200 feet deep. At 1,200 feet, the pressure of the water on an object is roughly 534 pounds per square inch, or PSI. So which material could safely stand up to that kind of pressure? Well, polyurethane has a compressive strength of about 20,000 PSI, so it would have no problem standing up to the pressure on the dome. Glass, on the other hand, has a much lower compressive strength at a meager 1,000 PSI. Unfortunately, both materials could theoretically stand up to 534 PSI. Well, looks like that was no help at all, top scientist. Sandy could have made her tree dome out of either material and been just fine. Another one for unanswered questions. Question four. How does the dome defy the laws of physics? Perhaps the strangest thing we've seen the dome do is in the episode Flea in Her Dome. In an attempt to stop a flea infestation, Sandy opens her tree dome and lets in some water. <laughs> and by some water, we mean all the water in the entire ocean. According to our top scientists, that's roughly one quintillion and 350 quadrillion metric tons of water. All being shoved into how much space exactly? Well, we know SpongeBob is four inches tall, so using him as our ruler, we can conclude that the radius of the dome is 22 inches and the height of the dome is 32 inches, at least according to this image. Since the image shows us that the dome is not a perfect half sphere, we'll have to break it up into a half sphere and a cylinder. Find the volume of both and 
combined, which tells us that Sandy's tree dome has a volume of about 615 liters. So one quintillion and 350 quadrillion metric tons, all being forced into 615 liters of space, would give it a density of two quadrillion, 196 trillion, 479 billion, 100 million metric tons per liter. And assuming it didn't collapse into a black hole, it would create a pressure inside the dome of roughly 41 sextillion and 600 quintillion PSI. For just a couple of comparisons, a car tire has a PSI of 32. A rocket engine creates a PSI of 3,000. The core of the Earth itself only has a PSI of about 48 million. And the material making up Sandy's tree dome is supposedly able to withstand 20,000 PSI at most. So according to our top scientists, this tree dome should have been absolutely annihilated by the internal pressure. But once again, Sandy's tree dome has defied science and eluded our understanding. Something fishy's going on here. Giving us yet another unanswered question. That's all for today. It turns out there are a lot of questions about Sandy's tree dome that just can't be answered. Or at least not by our top scientist. Maybe he'll do better next time.